Hello and welcome to What's Bubbling is in Bureau. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to continue to look at the new things in Zimcat 03, and we're going to jump to some of our features, new features. Yay! And one of those is effects. So let's have a look. We'll go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com, press on the cat and choose whoop, slide on over to the things that are new. Uh, here's effects. We're also in the next bubbling going to take a look at what's new in layout and a bunch of new things that we present in the layout example. But this bubbling is on effects. So we press effects and here we have them. Woohoo! Uh, these wrap the create JS effects. Uh, which were called, not effects, but were called filters. So it was a filter array that you would use. You would have to cache and make sure to update cache. So we've sort of automated that system and wrapped it up and made it a little bit easier. And also provided a couple new effects, one called a drop shadow effect. We already have shadow, but that was a little bit different. Um, a drop shadow... Uh, is operating on, as a matter of fact, this is a drop shadow up here. So the drop shadow is operating on all of these pixels to make that inner shadow go on. Uh, there's also a cutout as well, which are new to these uh, two, two new effects we've added. Um, the other one is glow. So this is an example. Uh, this might be blur. I can't remember if that's blur or glow that we're looking at now. They're, they're similar. But the glow will run around the edge of it. I think this is a glow. And one thing we have to watch out for is because we're operating on every pixel on the, the display object, uh, that's quite um, processor intensive. And when you're animating it, even more so. So we had put a zog in there. That's our console.log. Put a zog in inside the effect. And we got into a million zogs uh, almost like right away. Just zoom. And I've never seen those, uh, those logs go up so quickly. So just watch it. It is intensive. Mind you, we've got a bunch of effects going on here on this one example, and it runs as smooth as butter on an iPad. So it can be done, but just try not to overuse them, I suppose we might say. Um, some of the effects as well we've taken out. If they only had one value, such as uh, um, hue, saturation, contrast, and uh, brightness. Those are various color effects from the color matrix things. We've simplified that and provided that as just a property. So you can animate that property just like any other property or apply it just like any other property. Remember, it's doing an effect in the background though, so don't overuse it. But they're setting the saturation right down. Look at that, isn't that cool? Like on uh, various things, there's a blur, the knockout with the glow, changing colors uh, that might be hue, uh, here's contrast, maybe, or brightness, it looks like, maybe, or a bit of each. So we're going to look through the code now. Let's go to the docs. Boop, boop. And it's opened up effect for us. So we use the effect method on an object to be able to apply effects. And that links through to the example that we just saw. There's some information about effects, so you should read where they came from and some of the warnings, I guess, uh, behind it. Uh, effects are quite processor intensive, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera there. There's also different ways that we handle the IDs. Here are the effects, a blur effect, a glow effect, a shadow effect, a color effect, multi effect, and an alpha effect. So with uh, some information, if we pop on down, here is how, for instance, a glow effect is applied. It's got a knockout, so we can see through it. We're going to end up seeing through this label uh, where the label used to be, but it'll have a glow around it, and we're going to see through to that image in the background. That's kind of a neat effect. <laughs> hey, what do you know? So there we are applying blur and so forth, and there's the object that's being applied with the effect method. Here's an effect method that's applying two different effects, a glow effect and a shadow effect. And when we mouse down, we're saying remove the effect. So there's a no effect method as well. But remove, if, if we don't put anything in there, it's going to remove all the effects. Um, but if we put a glow in there, then it will specifically remove the glow effect and not the shadow effect. Here's another example where we're styling it. So these effects can be styled. That was one nice thing. Bringing these in to Zim, we're able to use the Zim Duo technique on it. So when we provide parameters, we can either use the parameters directly 
or we can use the squiggly brackets, that's Zim Duo. We can also apply Zim Oct, which is style, so we can style these, and you can use um, Zim V values in them as well, so we can use dynamic parameters in these. So all, all three of those are very important and powerful features of Zim that we can now apply as we uh, code our effects, which is very cool. Here we are animating an effect. So there we are uh, saying that we're going to apply a blur effect. It will have a blur X of 200. And then when we animate, we're animating on the effects property. So each object, when we apply effects, each object has now an effects property that holds the different types of effects, such as blur. And there we are accessing the blur X. So to be able to animate how much the blur effect is animating in the X, in the blur, we are accessing it with quotes like that. That's the dots, the, the dot format of animate. Okay, um, if the effect were just, if it were just a saturation, for instance, uh, a saturation is one of the properties now. So hue, saturation, brightness, and contrast, those are all available as well in the multi-effect or in the color effect. I can't remember which one. Uh, in the multi-effect. So these are the, it used to be called a um, color matrix filter in CreateJS. So we've pulled those out of the color matrix filter and made them as properties, which means we can go ahead and wiggle saturation. Or you could set something like you could say pick dot saturation equals and give it a value. So there we are wiggling. Remember when we wiggle any of the properties, even an X property or Y property, when we're specifying the property to wiggle, we specify it in quotes like that. And so there we are wiggling saturation. That would be the same as doing this. Apply an effect, please. And uh, let's see, make it a new multi-effect to wiggle. So we'd be applying a multi-effect to the, oh, sorry, not to wiggle, but to the pick. And then wiggle it. Once we've got that multi-effect on there, wiggle the effect.multi.saturation. So this would be the same thing. That's what we're doing in behind. But because we've provided this directly as a property, we don't have to do this extra, uh, this extra stuff. Cool, huh? All right. So the parameters is what effect a default X position for the caching bounds. Okay, so uh, you can adjust the cache as you're applying that effect. By default, the effect will uh, cache the object. It has to to apply the effect. So any object that you're going to apply effect to will be cached to turn it into uh, a bitmap, and then the effect gets put on the pixels of those bitmaps. We've just abstracted that, so you don't have to remember to cache it. If our natural Zim caching, which takes the bounds and caches the bounds isn't doing it for you, you can specify uh, different bounds for caching. So that's the effects or the effect parameter. There's all our uh, method. There's also an update effects. So if you aren't animating will automatically update the effect, but if you make a change to an effect, for instance, here's a rectangle, we put an effect which is a blur effect on it. When we mouse down, if we want the blur effect to change, we can change it like that, rect.effects. So all of the effects, except for the property ones, are applied on the effects object there. So rect.effects.blur, set the blur x, uh, increase it by 20. So every time we click on it, it's going to be increasing its blur. If we do that with code, we have to say rect.updateEffects. It's expensive to update effects. We don't want to do those automatically because there might be multiple effects that you do at once, and then you can update them all at the same time. So we're batching the update, and we batch the update for you automatically with wiggle and with animate, so you don't need to worry about it there. But any other time that you uh, update effects, you're going to have to update the effect. Kind of similar to a blob, blob and squiggle. If you change the points manually at any time with code, you've got to apply an update on the blob and squiggle. There you go. And stage dot update. So that was how to update the effects. Note the plural S. And then the last one is no effect. That's how to remove the effect. So you can remove the effect like that, or you could remove all the effects uh, by just not including anything in there, as mentioned. 
those are the methods that go on the object itself. And then down below, boom, 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 under effects, hey, what do you know? So here we are in the controls, which operate on other objects. Uh, under control or under the controls, under effects, we have now added the blur effect, glow effect, shadow, color, multi, and alpha effect. They're all there, boom, boom, like that. So if you open that up, you get to see uh, information about the parameters and more examples of how to set the effect and some various ways to remove things or uh, change things, update, etc are there. A second example with us animating the effects, information about the parameters, um, and there we go. Okay. Um, in behind, that was a blur effect. Let's just take a peek and see what that one looks like. If we view it, there it is. So these effects are really operating on, uh, do we see it somewhere, the CreateJS blur effect. So we're passing that stuff into the CreateJS blur effect. So we're really just wrapping that, uh, that stuff up, um, but we're also applying ways to cache the objects and deal with it. I think that all come maybe somewhere else, but anyway, it's not that much to, to apply these things. They were already around in CreateJS. It's just we've applied a sort of a, maybe an easier way. It's hard, hard to say. I think, I think we've applied an easier way to handle it, um, to be able to animate these effects after, as well as the power of Zim um, in the ways that we call these things with the Zim Duo technique, Zim V values, and uh, Zim Ox style. Okay, what about the properties? Where can they be found? The properties are up on, on every, uh, we've adjusted it in Zimcat now. We've got more properties that are common to two things. I'm going to take you to a shape. How about this rectangle right here? So under, under the properties now, there's methods, but under properties, we list specific properties for the rectangle, corner, dash, that kind of stuff. But we now have a section here, also see Zim container for properties such as width and height, width only. These used to be listed under each object. And we've decided to just say, well, hey, this object extends a container. So go see the container for the, the basic properties. So width, height, width only, height only. If you want to read about those, you'd have to look under the Zim container. Also, whether it's draggable, the level, depth, and group that involves. But here, here you go. Here's blend mode. Uh, well, that's always been around. And then these are the four effects, hue, saturation, brightness, and contrast. So to read about the hue, saturation, contrast, and brightness on any of these display objects, you need to go to the container. The container can be found right here. And when we open up the container, uh, we get examples. There are the methods. And then here are the properties. So there's information about all those guys. And then here's information about the hue, saturation, brightness, and contrast, along with a couple stars. The following are convenience effects that will run a Zim multi effect. So Zim multi effect is how you can get these four all in one effect. These can use a lot of processing when animating. So see the docs uh, under effects to find out, more, to read more about that. But there you are, you can set the hue and it's a, a value between minus 80 and 180 and it'll eventually cycle around to all colors. You kind of experiment with it, you want to say. So it's not like a hue of green, it's a hue of uh, 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 change the hue. It sort of shifts from whatever the, it shifts the, the colors of the pixels that are in there. And same with saturation, between minus 100, so that would be black and white, to 100 would be very, very colorful or whatever, with zero being no change. So in all cases, zero is no change to the object, and you can change the contrast and the brightness as well. So that's Zim FX. Yeah, isn't that neat? I mean, I love it, huh? That Zim FX, we didn't take a look specifically through the code here. I mean, we could shall we? Um, just as a summary, maybe. This is Zim, Zim site. We're bringing in Zimcat3. And we've got an asset called Pragma. We've also got a font called Word, Word War Games, sorry, that we're bringing in. And here we are applying an effect to the font. Let's open that up in Browser Plus. 
Here's what the font looks like without the effect. Boop. Just in case you think the effect includes that grid, that grid actually comes with the font. So I like that too, actually. We're very flat and zim in our design, but uh, some people like drop shadows and, <laughs> and bevels and all that kind of stuff. So when we apply this shadow effect, it's doing an inner drop shadow on all of these, uh, all of the lines that you see in there. So we'll bring that in. We've adjusted the distance and the strength and the quality. Watch the quality. Um, the quality means that run this effect four times, basically. So that's four times more effect than a quality default of one, which is the default. And we've also made that effect to be an inner effect on that. So well, isn't this fun? You can play around with that. and You can see it makes this kind of fun waffle, a waffle look. Here we have an image, and then we're applying a glow effect on that image. Probably we don't need the inner false. We were most likely experimenting with that kind of stuff, so we wouldn't need those. And then we're saying pick, please add an effect uh, of only a glow effect in this case, so we don't need to put it in. <laughs> Sorry, just the example. If we wanted multiple effects on there, you could use the, the square bracket, so I'm fine with keeping it there. We've also changed the hue of it to start. So if we don't change the hue, um, that purpley color is no longer purpley. And by the way, we're changing the hue of the glow as well. So applying the hue after the glow would, would do that. And there we have the hue not being there. So that's a normal looking pragma and her colors. But in applying the hue of minus 80, it brings pragma into this sort of violet kind of color, which we sort of like. There's us wiggling something. So we could wiggle the saturation. Let's try that. Um, so this is wiggling the saturation. There it is, desaturated to more. You know, it's 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 wiggling uh, how much color is in there. Very cool, huh? And th but this starts running. Uh, the processor is is having a harder and harder time as we add more effects to this. So you just need to be careful and watch out for that. Here we are animating the blur. Of it. So I think we saw that in, in the docs example to zero. We're doing rewinds and times just like all the others to be able to apply this effect in a certain way. Um, pragmas got, oh, there's the tiling of the pragmas. So we've tiled our, our cloned asset there. And what have we got? We're setting the contrast in one. So the first thing in that tile this is getting the items at zero, or you could do get child at zero. Uh, we're adjusting the contrast. So the contrast of this pragma, just adjust it as a property. In the blur case, we're applying a blur effect, and this is how much blur there is in the Y. By the way, the default blur is like 10 or 20, I can't remember, which means it is blurring in the X, but that, sorry, did I say Y? I meant X. Um, I was wanting to get over here. We haven't blurred in the Y. Here's what a blur would look like in the in the X only. I don't know if you can tell the difference. Uh, I guess you can a little bit. It, it's kind of looking like this, where it's getting primarily even even this effect, the glow effect, isn't full out X only. Let's go up and take a look at that. Uh, it was the glow effect here. If we go with the blur Y of zero then the glow looks like this. So it's uh, extreme, like it's cut off a line and it's only going in this direction. So it sort of looks like a motion blur or something like that, which is very cool. But we decided we wanted, we wanted a little bit of a blur Y in there to kind of round uh, the edge a little bit on, on that. So um, just watch that. If you think you're applying only only a, a blur in the X, you're not actually. You're also applying the default, which is like 20 or 10. I can't remember which is the default of that of that size. Uh, we're adjusting the next the next pragma two and three, doing brightness and saturation. So here's brightness. We've made that darker and saturation, we've brought it right down. If we change brightness, I can't remember what brightness looks like at 100, but there's a quite bright looking, uh, which is similar to contrast, but you can see the difference. This is not as contrasty 
And Amy had suggested we be able to click on these and open them up big. We just didn't get around to it. That's probably a good idea. We'll bring a, a glow down here, uh, that purpley glow down here, and be able to click on these and see a big version of it right there. Maybe we'll get to that one day, perhaps. All right, what did I just change there? Brightness, I think. So those are some examples of that. And then the other pragma, we scaled it down a touch. Which one was it? I think it's this one. So that the glow size appeared to be roughly the same sort of size as the other ones. You don't have to, but this is what it would look like if we didn't do that. Refresh. She just is too big. <laughs> And the tiling is taking that as part of its uh, size and sort of pushing it down. I, I don't know, we didn't bother center, centering the, the vertical on that or whatever. So all we did was drop that down a bit. And our effect is indeed a glow effect, pink knockout true. So there's that knockout. Knockout's a little bit different than hide object, is it? Yeah, I think there's the hide object true. If we do a hide object true, then we get uh, full glow. So it doesn't knock out where the object is. It just makes a full glowed effect. It's like the object would normally sit on top of that, but we've hidden the object. So that's um, two parameters that we didn't have in CreateJS. By the way, I should mention that those new new uh, effects, the, the drop shadow effect, and which we call shadow effect, and the glow effect were found on the internet. I can't remember the exact URLs or the names of them, long names in GitHub, but we've credited those in Zim, obviously, and you can go check out their documentation on it and see how they were made on GitHub. But thank you very much for the original creators of those two effects. In Zim, we usually make everything ourselves, aside from what comes from CreateJS, but on occasion, there's been some times where we brought in works from from other places, such as our, our sound in, not the synthesizer, but in playing digital sounds, came from Frank Forrest and his, his uh, cool little system there. And I think noise was the other case. We brought in some noise equations, uh, but noise equations are out there in the sort of the general public, but still thank you for those who uh, in the past had created those noise equations. And thank you once again for the, the blur and, or no, the glow and the shadow effects that have come from outside. We already have a drop shadow or a sha shadow uh, that comes from CreateJS and that's the CreateJS shadow. Uh, you can continue to use that as well. That's great for putting traditional drop shadows on here, but I think you'll find some more parameters available for you in the effects shadow. Nice. Okay, so what was this? This was going to be a knockout true. And we'll bring the knockout. And there was one last one to take a look at here was the multi effect here. So, oh, color effect. So the color effect, and it looks like we've applied a multi effect as well. The multi effect is a way that you can apply hue, saturation, brightness, and contrast, right, as parameters all together like that. Uh, like I said, you could have done that as well with um, individual properties. These are all available as properties, but we've shown you that you can do it this way as well. And then this is a color effect. The color effect can be kind of tricky as well. It's a red multiplier, green multiplier, blue multiplier, and alpha multiplier. So four parameters initially. And then a red offset, green offset, blue offset, and alpha offset. So how much you're adding to each of the colors. Basically, that cycles the colors through a system. You're kind of like adding, uh, adding more green, blue, red, whatever it may be, uh, however many you've added here, or negative numbers to move in the opposite direction. And the multiplier is taking a color and making it more or less uh, with 0.5s. And so you just have to sort of play around with that to be able to um, try and get the colors you like. Here we've turned the colors to make a very sort of bluish looking pragma. Eh, you know, whatever you want to do there so you can change colors of things. Yay! Alrighty, and is that it? Yeah, that's, uh, there you go. Oh, I should take that out. No, that's the yeah. So remember when if you if you ever come in and 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 use the things that we're showing in cat, we've got a a, a Zim cat header here, so you don't need that. Yeah. Probably want to take that out. 
That has been a What's Bubbling, and we've seen we've gone through the effects. Hopefully that was fun for you. Remember, kind of use sparingly, or well, check uh, check your um, your frame rate uh, if you can. We've got a meter in the game module, or you can use your, your Firefox or your Chrome to check on the frames per second there. Uh, or just see if it's if it's laggy, then um, the slow down on effects. Quality will change it, so quality will have a big effect on that. Uh, what quality did we have? Uh, I, I can show you what the qualities look like. Um, the difference is, it's just sort of up to you on this blur. What did we set for the quality? That's the animate. Here's a quality of one. So let's go to a quality of three and see what we've got. That's the quality of one. I think it looks pretty good. And we refresh here. Uh, sometimes the quality increases the size of it. I might not want um, as much strength on that, for instance, or the, the, the actual uh, distance of the blur. So that's the strength. You can see that we've reduced the strength a little bit on that. And it just fades a bit nicer. It's just like uh, more more blurry <laughs> kind of than the other one. Um, so check the quality, but if you don't need it, keep it at keep it at one and uh, I think your performance will will be a little bit better all right cheers I am dr. abstract this has been a what's bubbling is in have a great day or night we're going to come back for I think our final bubbling on the new things in zimcat 03 with kind of like uh, we're gonna look at layout and a few other things in their uh, ticks and or not ticks but uh, labels on sliders and dials. Oh, that's been a request for a while. So look forward to seeing you there and come join us, zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord. Uh, we'd love to talk to you. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask there. That'd be great. Cheers. <laughs>